all very well being good at the individual disciplines within triathlon, but if you're not very good at putting them together and performing them as one, then it's not really much use. No, and you're probably all likely familiar with the dreaded jelly legs feeling as you exit the water or head out onto your run. And I hate to admit it, but these feelings don't really tend to go away, but you can reduce them and get used to them. Yeah, and that's where the brick workout comes in. And predominantly, you're going to have the bike to run, as that's the most common, it's the easiest for most people to do. But you could also have a swim to bike or even a swim to run. Right then, a few things before we get started. And if this is your first ever brick, then forget about any intensity. It's just about doing it nice and easy and going through the motions. And for this example, we're going to talk about 45 minute bike and a really short run of 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah, and this can be performed indoors or outdoors. A lot of people opt for indoors because it's just that bit easier if you do have a treadmill, obviously. But you can also do one inside and then go and do the run outside or vice versa. Right then, so let's get stuck in here. And as I said, we're going to go for bike to run. So have your running shoes at the ready. Well, this session will focus on sprint to Olympic distance triathlon intensities, but it will tap into that top end speed that can be useful for longer distance races, so sometimes gets forgotten about. So we're going to start all of our workouts with a warm up for the bike of 15 minutes at your zone two power, or 73 to 80% of your maximum heart rate, or an RPE of three to four. But of course, do feel free to extend this out longer if you've got the time. Now onto our main set for the bike, we've got three minutes at your FTP or 91% of your maximum heart rate or RPE of eight, into one minute at your zone five power or 93 to 100% of your maximum heart rate or an RPE of nine to 10. Back into two minutes at your FTP, followed by 30 seconds back at your zone five power into 3.5 minutes of recovery spinning at your zone two power. And we'll repeat this set through four times. Then onto the run of four times three minutes at your threshold run pace or 95% of your maximum heart rate, which is an RPE of seven to eight, with two minutes of zone two jog recovery between at 73 or 80% of your maximum heart rate, which is RPE of three to four. Now after the final rep, go straight into the warm down. In fact, we're gonna finish all of our workouts with a warm down of five minutes jogging recovery at zone two, which is 73 to 80% of your maximum heart rate or an RPE of three to four. Now we're gonna to head to a more level and even pace workout, the sweet spot to tempo. Sweet spot is for the bike, tempo is for the run. Now sweet spot is pretty close to most people's Ironman 70.3 race pace, and it's also a popular one for training as you're working just below that lactate threshold. So in theory, you're pushing up the ceiling of your threshold and because you're not going into that lactate area, you should be able to maintain that for longer as well. And then running off that at a similar intensity, which would be somewhere around about seven out of 10 on the RP scale in terms of our heart rate, well that would be somewhere around about 85 to 90% of our maximum heart rate. And if you want to think in terms of pace, well you could take your current 5k pace and add 30 seconds per kilometer to that, or indeed 15 to 20 seconds to your current 10k pace. So now for the session. After you've had a good warm up on the bike, you're gonna head straight into the main set, which is two lots of 20 minutes at your sweet spot intensity, which is 84 to 94% of FTP, 75 to 85% of your maximum heart rate, or an RPE of 67, with 10 minutes at zone two recovery spin. But then after the second and final rep, you're going to jump straight off the bike and then onto the run, which is two lots of 10 minutes at tempo, or 85 to 90% of your maximum heart rate, an RPE of seven, followed by five minutes at zone two, just recovery jog in between with a heart rate of 73 to 80% of your max or an RPE of three to four. Now then, if you're looking to spice things up well, we've got a multi-stage brick workout for you here, which is effectively bike run, bike run, and yes, bike run. Now, if you are looking to work through that dreaded jelly leg feeling that I chatted about before, then this is exactly where you need to start. Yeah, this is a great workout if you're training for those longer distance events as it teaches your body to deal with that fatigue you get at the back end of a race. But if you are training for something shorter, you can just decrease the length of each of those intervals and increase the intensity a little bit. 30 minutes on the bike at zone three or 80 to 87% of your max heart rate with an RPE being five to six 
onto the run for 15 minutes, again at zone three, 80 to 87% of your max heart rate and RP of five to six. And now to interject a little bit of pace change and fatigue, you get back on the bike for four times four minutes at your FTP or 91% of your max heart rate, RPE of eight, with four minutes of zone two recovery spinning between each rep but not after the final rep because we're straight into a run of five minutes at threshold or 80 to 90% of your max heart rate, RP of seven. Five minutes zone two recovery with another two and a half minutes at your threshold, back into two and a half minutes at zone two for recovery and a final one minute and 15 seconds at your threshold. Finally, a bike of 30 minutes zone three and a run of 15 minutes also zone three, which is moderate aerobic pace or an RPE of five to six. Now we're gonna finish up with quite a simple workout that's aimed at Ironman distance racing. You're going to do three hours on the bike at your target Ironman race pace or race power, which will be around 64 to 80% of your FTP or 72 to 84% of your maximum heart rate and an RPE of four to five. And then straight onto a one hour run, again at your target Ironman race pace, 70 to 85% of your threshold pace or 65 to 75% of your maximum heart rate, which would be an RPE of three to four. Now then, these are some of the sessions that I used to really enjoy doing and they're excellent for letting you target and dial into your race pace, but crucially for giving you some much needed confidence ahead of race day. Yeah, there's some meaty sessions in there, so good luck with those and let us know how you get on and maybe which is your favorite workout. And if you've enjoyed it, hit the thumb up like button and to subscribe to GTN to make sure you get all of our videos, just hit the globe. And if you are training for a marathon, whether that's at the end of an Ironman or a standalone one, we've got a video to help you with your training just here. Yeah, and if you want to see a session that we did about top four bike workouts, you can find that here.